We're joined today on the bridge by His Golden Messenger and specifically MC Taylor. The new album, Quietly Blowing It, is at June 25th on Merge. Already Rolling Stone has named this one of the most anticipated albums of 2021. When you see that kind of stuff, does, is it kind of mind blowing? Um, I guess I don't take it very seriously. <laughs> but uh, it's nice of them to say that. Yeah, so Quietly Blowing It, um, you know, it sounds like you're being hard on yourself again. Uh, hard on myself and hard on hard on us as humans. Yes. <clears throat> you know, it's uh, the, the my understanding is that your intent going into this was I think the phrase you used was I went looking for peace. Even before the pandemic had grounded us all, um, I think I I knew that I needed to or wanted to do some kind of soul searching or reckoning, um, try and, uh, no, try and remember what I was, what I am doing this for, which actually sounds, you know, like, um, yeah, I, not to say that that my life is not fortunate in so many different ways, um, but uh, there were just some like sort of complications of the soul, maybe, um, which like just kind of led right into the, the the pandemic, which in so many ways has been so chaotic and and hard for so many people. It, it also did give me time to reflect and, and what ended up coming out was, was this record. You know, the, that, that extra time, like you were kind of burned out uh, coming off of tour and yeah, yeah I, was, so, I was fried. And so you really wanted to sort of keep other people's thoughts, opinions, everything sort of out of this process and just make it about you. And then the pandemic hits. It feels like it just kind of got a whole new layer. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, the silver lining of, of you know, I, we continue to find these little silver linings in this experience that overall has been, has been fairly devastating. Um, you know, for me, it was being, you know, being in one place for, for a long time um, and having time to, having time to process, I think, and, and really think about how to say the things that I wanted to say, or how to sing, um, how to sing in rhyming verse, the things that were on my mind that, that I needed to say yeah, to myself, not really to, to other people, although I, I, I think that there is a resonance with the, with the words that are on the album, um, but you know, just to like explain to myself what it is that I've dedicated my life to. <laughs> you know, you you talked about the pandemic and the world going kind of crazy. And one of the songs on the album that we've been playing a lot is Sanctuary. And, you know, you're reconciling tragedy and joy. And I think that that's really something that a lot of your songs really do so well is like, look at both sides of the coin. Uh -huh. And another artist that's one of my absolute favorites uh, also did that quite a bit. And you named Jack Handsome Johnny, John Prine. Yeah. Uh, and I'm assuming that Sanctuary maybe was written shortly after he passed, which was I yeah. think April 7th of last year. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Sanctuary was written. Um, yep. Right after he had passed away. And, um, you know, John Prine's music has been continues to be um, very important to me. He had such a beautiful way of saying things. Um, he just really had a touch. He had a touch. He had a real, a real touch with words. And, um, and he was also, I didn't know him well, but I knew him a little bit. And um, he was just a beautiful person. And his whole family is, 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 is really lovely and um that was a hard loss actually yeah <laughs> that was a tough one um 
It was hard so, for me, and I'd only met him one time for like 15 seconds riding in an elevator, you know, but it, uh, yeah, yeah. It I mean, it was hard to him through a lifetime of music. Yeah, it was hard for me purely as a listener, you know, like I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't like suppose that I had any, any, I wouldn't assume that I had any relationship with him that I, that I could, you know, that felt, I, I purely just as a listener, um, I thought Tree of Forgiveness, his last full length record that he made was one of his greatest records he ever made. And it was a testament to like, just his sort of like wisdom. He always felt like a wise writer and he got wise. He got wiser as he got older. And I was, as a as as a musician, you got what you you hope for models like that, right? Because there aren't that many. So, it was it was uh, it was I was sad to see him go. Yeah, and he had that that ability to make you laugh. And then while you're laughing, you go, "Oh, wait a second! This is one of the saddest songs I've ever heard." Yeah, you know. Yeah. So yeah. it, it, back to that sort of duality, there was a quote um, from you about this record where you were, and I believe it might have been even been in, in, you know, speaking about Sanctuary, where you were saying that you weren't sure what the difference was between mourning and celebrating, and mm. I wondered if you could elaborate on that. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean... I'm not sure how how I can what what I could say to elaborate other than it does seem like mourning and celebrating are are related. <laughs> um, maybe not always, but you know I I think that um, you know there is no there is no mourning without understanding the joy that you know, that joy that you no longer have, have present, um, you know, kind of like we, we, we can really only understand the daytime because we have the nighttime, right? I mean, you need the, you need the, you need the, the darkness to understand the light and, and vice versa. So, um, yeah, I do think morning and celebration are, are related. I feel like a lot of my music actually is maybe exists in that space. There's like a sadness to, or a bittersweetness maybe to my music, but also like a joyfulness that, you know, I, it is intentionally, I am looking for those middle spaces that um, I am looking to have my music exist in those middle spaces and, and it can be, sometimes hard for like i think my music rewards repeated listening maybe that's the best way to say it because there's a lot of different there's a wholeness i try and put a wholeness of emotion into my music um you know i'm always telling people like we're not i'm not making this music in a minor which is you know on one hand, like A minor is a very easy, sad chord to play on the guitar. It's kind of like day one of guitar school, A minor is, and it just sounds sad. And some, I think some musicians exist purely in that world of A minor. And, um, and that's cool, some of them do it so well Right. And it's very compelling and convincing, but like it's just A minor is not enough for me. I use a lot of A minor in my music, <laughs> but I need I need I, I, I want more than that. Get out of my own mind. I know how to sing about it. Ring a bone, little lonely. I better hit the road, child. We can cry into the phone a while. Me steady with the opener. 
that little light's gotta last a while Like an arrow to the marrow I know it feels like hell Till we make it to the other side You want good news You want sanctuary When you try to get real Or oh, they break you on the wheel You want to move You want sanctuary That's all I can offer to you From the bottom to the bone Get used to the bad news It's all part of the show, child well, Handsome Johnny had to go, child Did you feel, brother, bad dreams? Are there something you should know now? All those things that'll cut you down Ragged people hard times And the lightning strikes the poor ass The rich man cries like a crocodile Salvation, despair The game that they taught me Sometimes it feels like it just ain't fair You want good news, you want sanctuary and When you try to get rid, or oh, they break you on the wheel You want to move, you want sanctuary That's all I can offer to you from the bottom to the bone, to the bone, yeah, to the bone, oh, to the bone, yeah, to the bone, yeah, to the bone, yeah, to the bone, yeah, to the bone. Get out of my own mind I know how to sing about it Our guest today on the bridge His Golden Messenger MC Taylor The new album Quietly Blowing It Out June 25th on Merge So between March and June of last year You hold up in the room That you're sitting in right now and just wrote yeah and it was like over 20 songs now somewhere in there there was about a week where you went and did some co-writing with Gregory Allen Isakoff I actually did that writing with Gregory right before the pandemic hit the United States in fact I was with him at his farm in um, he, he has a place right outside Boulder Colorado and we were writing together both for my record and and for his um and i remember like watching the news and seeing this this virus actually starting to shut down um china at that time and i remember talking we were talking to each other like wow uh this like apparently this new virus is shutting down china and hmm i wonder and then the next day would come and we'd watch the news again and wow like am I going to be able to get home? Cause I have to fly home in a couple of days. I went, you know, and um, here we are. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. So my last, my last trip that I took before everything shut down was actually out to Colorado to, to write with him. 
So you had close to two dozen songs out of this whole process, largely sitting in the room that you're in now. Um, and you actually, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but my understanding is that you basically sort of filled every role in some early demos of these songs, playing all the instruments so yeah. that your band would have a, a blueprint for what you were looking for. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I did um, like this was, I was very hands-on with this particular one in terms of the arrangements, what I wanted people to play. I hope I didn't drive my bandmates crazy um, or make anybody mad. I was very bossy with this record, <laughs> but not a, in a, I was a benevolent dictator on this one. Um, I, I just had very clear ideas about exactly what I wanted wanted things to sound like what I wanted people to play and um, you know like my demo because I did there is a version of the record that exists on in which I play everything the drums the keyboards everything but I don't play it all that well so um, <laughs> I just was basically showing people these recordings and saying like just hear what I'm doing there do that but do it much better than that <laughs> Um, yeah. so after you had those demos you actually took it into a studio and right yeah so like when we went to record um you know everybody was tested uh we were masked and um was were we being safe enough i i don't actually you know no nobody got sick nobody left you know every everyone was fine but it's just, it was so hard to know at that time. I mean, it sort of continues to be hard to know. And I've been, I've been totally vaccinated and my whole band has too. But, um, you know, at that time, almost nine months ago, last summer, in the thick of it, it was really hard to know what was safe, what wasn't, what was absolutely do not do that. And you know what I mean? But yeah. I just was like, yeah, I don't know. We, we, we did it and, um, and it turned out fine. You know, I, I was sort of taken by the fact that you really wanted to record this with your touring band. And yeah. one of the things that they really bring, besides the fact that they've played with you for so long and, and have all the sort of chops down and understand how to work with you and all of that, but there's also just like a level of comfort there. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, part of it was like, I wanted to be around my friends. <laughs> I hadn't seen my, my friends for many, many months. Um, and after we made the record, it was the same, you know? So that was like my one um, bit of time to just like have my, my people around me that aren't my immediate family, my wife and kids. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of a joyful island in the midst of just so much, so much chaos. Yes, please. Play it with, play it nimble, make it lasting, make it faithful. Cross the hill, high voices in the gloom, in the echo, enough to hear. Close beside me, far from me, laughing lonely. Where the fear burn the candle, can you hand? Just a little way 
in an empty sky On my wing now I long to use ya In the black rock heaps I got caught fooling Hey, it's a brief wheel of fortune When you need me I'll be running Tired horses made me wander across the yonder. I hear voices in the echo, enough to hear close beside me, but far from me. I've been lonely where the fear burn the candle. Can you handle? Oh, my way, just learn to fly. Just a little way in an empty sky Oh my way, now I long to use you In the black rock hall where the kids are fooling Our guest today, MC Taylor, His Golden Messenger, the new album, Quietly Blowing It, is out June 25th on Merge. You know, we talked about how you really wanted this to be a, an incredibly personal album, and you were trying to keep other people's opinions and thoughts and feelings sort of out of the writing process. But then when it came to recording it, you not only brought in your own band, but you also have some pretty incredible guests popping up here and there. You've got uh, Griffin and Taylor Goldsmith of Dawes, Zach Williams of The Lone Bellow, Buddy Miller does some really tasteful guitar work on it, Josh Kaufman. Um, and of course, we talked about uh, the co-write with Gregory Allen Isaacoff. I wanted to, to really sort of home in though on one track if it comes in the morning you got a little songwriting help from a friend yeah um my friend Anais Mitchell who's an incredible songwriter was I don't know if she would call it a co-write because really what happened is I got about two-thirds of the way through the song and was just not satisfied with whatever I was coming up with and so I called her and was like can you help me with this last verse here <laughs> uh i don't know there was something about the song that made me think that she would be someone that could sort of point the way towards where how it wanted to land <laughs> yeah it's, it's going to be so much fun hopefully to see you tour around this album i noticed that there are some tour dates out there uh, beginning in december is there any chance that you know, um, that we could see you out before then? Uh, I don't, I don't really know. Um, I've talked about doing some stuff with my, with my, my, my folks um, before, but I think we were trying to schedule far enough out that it felt, it didn't feel like a big, a big risk, a cancellation risk. Right. I think everybody in the music biz is has like cancellation and postponement fatigue. So trying to like trying to avoid putting everyone through that again. Um, so I don't know. It's hard to say, though. You know, one of the things that I was really kind of surprised at getting ready for this interview is just the the concept that for as personal as these songs are, when you take them out to record them live, you don't want to completely understand them yourself. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just, I, I feel like if I understand something, you know, if I understand the sort of cellular structure of every part of a song, 
it's not going to be very interesting. It's going to, yeah, it's not going to be very interesting for me. I have to, there have to be sort of dark spots in the tune that I don't totally understand. Usually that exists in the lyrics. Like I will <clears throat> come up with the lyric that it, it feels like it needs to be there for some reason, but I don't totally, I might not totally understand what it's trying to say. And sometimes over over time i'm i come to like oh okay yeah okay it makes sense yeah it makes sense <laughs> um and sometimes it just never kind of resolves but i just i like to have those those moments of mystery for myself they kind of like keep me coming back and kind of like sort of pushing on pushing on those places and kind of like what do i understand this today no nope, no nope, still totally I still don't understand why I said it that way, but okay, <laughs> we'll come back tomorrow and see if it makes any sense then. That's fun to me. I think that's important. If you need it, you can take it Recall how it feels Oh brother, don't break it Count up our losses They arose at the crosses And hope, hope is contagious Nobody said It'd be easy They'll say you ain't worth it They'll say you ain't ready There's a new day coming We've been a long time running Put your nose to the stone You can taste it And if it comes in the morning Will I be thankful if it comes in the morning? Will I be grateful if it comes in the morning? Lord, am I cry? I'm ready to try. But if it comes. The pain that we trusted, the sword and the sheep, lay them down now, they're rusty. But there's a spade if you're willing to work on the building. Whoa, to work on the building. And if it comes. Morning. Will I be thankful if it comes in the morning? Will I be grateful if it comes in the morning? Lord, am I cry? I'm ready to try. Well, if it comes in the morning. Whatever comes in the morning Will I be thankful if it comes in the morning Will I be grateful if it comes in the morning Lord, am I cry, I'm ready to try
Our guest today on the bridge, His Golden Messenger, MC Taylor, the new album, Quietly Blowing It, out June 25th. You know, I, I wanted, you're such an interesting guy because you've embraced so many different genres. Wow. Uh, and, uh, but I think that the one that settled into your own music is just sort of that filter of Southern music, which is incredibly broad, of course. But I wondered if you could talk about what that means to you. Yeah, what did you call it? Southern what? It's just Southern music. Oh yeah, Southern music, yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> when I think of music that comes from the Southern part of the United States, I often think of it as having a very strong rhythmic component. And um, that is something that exists, it, it exists really strongly in my music as, as sort of um, brainy or internal or whatever, however you want to describe my music, it always has a swing to it. And that's, that's very important to me. Um, I'm drawn to music that, that has a, that has the rhythmic pocket and um, you know, whether that be um, a pocket, <laughs> like you know the very very clear and funky pocket on like a meters record or um you know this sort of like this sort of spiritual pocket that exists on like you know uh john coltrane's love supreme john coltrane is from north carolina uh, so i think i claim him as a as a southern southern person um i just um I'm interested in that swing and it doesn't matter how, how fast or slow the tempo is to me, like a song has to swing. And um, certainly that has to be the case on my own records. Like I just, I don't know when it, when it swings, it just, it swings. It just, it's like the rhythm of life. It's the rhythm of the human body. It's like the heartbeat, you know, um, it just is important to me. That's, that's, that's what, that's what Southern music is. Now there's, um, there's lots of music that comes from this, this area that where that might not be the defining characteristic, but to me, that's what I think of when I think of music from the South. So you've just got uh, quietly blowing it coming out, but you have been doing a lot of other things too. And, um, and I may not have the timeline completely right on all of this, but I think that, that these projects are worth mentioning. A couple of live albums in support of the Durham Public Schools that are both available on Bandcamp. Right. Yeah, those, um, we put those records out. One of them is called Forward Children, and one of them is called School Days. And they both um, were benefit albums for an organization that I've worked a lot with called the Durham Public Schools Foundation, which is an advocacy organization for Durham, um, Durham public school educators and staff and students, of course, um, here in Durham, North Carolina, where I live. And um, my wife is a is a, is a school teacher, and when it seemed pretty clear that schools were going to close. I remember she came home and said, there are going to be a lot of really hungry kids out there um, because a lot of public school students depend on school for at least two meals a day, um, breakfast and lunch. And when school was out of session for so long, those kids did not have access to food. Um, so the Durham Public Schools Foundation was kind of at the forefront of um, you know, raising funds for having donations, um, food donations and, and distributing them. And, and I also would go to the warehouse where they were doing that and just like put on my, put on my, my work uniform and just help them distribute food too. But, but also all that money that was raised by those albums, which at this point I think is something like Forty-five, fifty thousand wow. um, dollars went to that organization, which I, I'm really proud of. Yeah, you should be. And then the other project seems like super interesting. I mean, like if, I really want to know more about Revelators. Oh my God, Revelators is so cool. 
<laughs> so this is like essentially a new band, right? Or yeah, it's a it's a new band that is uh yeah, it's kind of a new band that um really was my way of grappling, dealing with certain things that I don't know, like certain musical things that I I don't know that I had the the bandwidth or the ability to to put into the music of His Golden Messenger. Um, Revelators is purely instrumental. It um, it goes from like really drifting sort of sort of pastoral ambience to really really intense kind of like um on the corner miles davis is on the corner sort of cacophony of you know multiple drum kits just like going really intensely and um that's yeah, it's a project that ended up really being myself and my uh close friend cameron ralston who is the who is the house bass player for the space bomb band in richmond virginia they're like a a house band uh a house band that sort of functions on in the in the mold of like you know um Stax or Motown just in terms of like the personnel stays the same and they bring different people in I don't know if you know about them but uh incredible band yeah is there a release plan for this we're not quite sure what we're gonna do with it we, there's some um there's some ideas but I, I probably can't really say now um yeah so but that has been that has been i'm e i'm eager for his gold messenger fans to hear that record because it really is a strange inverted mirror in a way of quietly blowing it because the two records were being made at the same time and they're really like their re their relationship to each other is really it's it's quite striking i think um it really gives a very full emotional picture. Um, it's a cool record, yeah. Uh, but that I don't know. I, I I'm not sure like how, how much I should be like telling people, but I, I guess it doesn't matter at this point. Um, we're all living and living on our computers, whatever. Um, but I'm like this week. I'm finishing the mixing of another Hiss record, actually. I was going to ask you because you're pretty much an album a year kind of guy, very yeah. prolific, and with all this time, I figured you probably had the next one. It's like, <laughs> so like, does anybody say, "Can you please wait until this one at least comes out"? Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely do, <laughs> and I'd say, uh, yeah, sure, I'll wait until this one comes out. But I'm gonna, there's going to be three more records done. I mean. I don't know if I would, if the interest wasn't there, I probably wouldn't do it. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm very fortunate to like have enough of a base of interest that, that I can make these recordings. And, and I'm also very, very lucky to be in a position where I can come up with this timeline for release where where I actually can make these records and know when they're going to come out. Um, so, uh, yeah, in that, in that regard, I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. So. His golden messenger, the new album, quietly blowing it. You should be incredibly proud of this one. It's a really great record. Thank uh, you very much. Yeah, it comes out June 25th on Merge, and I encourage everyone to hurry up, get this one, consume it rapidly before the next one comes out. <laughs> Our guest today, MC Taylor, has just been such a pleasure. Thanks for your time. Thank you, John. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.